Turning to the subject of grafting, I want to go through this in some fine detail. Uh, I'm not saying anything here I haven't said before, but I just want to show this uh, in a new season uh, for a lot of new subscribers and um, also to set this out in fine detail. And I'm looking at the, um, the saddle graft particularly. Uh, it's not always the best graft to use, sometimes you can't use it, but where you've got wood of the correct diameter, the saddle graft I have found very effective and a lot of people have actually come back to me uh, in the three years since I first put something up about this and said that they've tried it and it's worked. Well I learned it from a book and it worked. Um, this one I've already done, obviously uh, we're indoors now, I've got a tree, a bit of a tree that's been pruned out of that tree in the garden there, just there, in our back garden, St Arthur Turner. Um, cooking apple and I'm just demonstrating this and this is a key point if you want to do this you need to practice 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 what I learned and that's the right thing to do just going to show you how this works uh, this is the um, if you like the, uh, this is the stock and I've, I've cut that to the right shape I've, I didn't get it right first time I've, I've trimmed that's not really right both ways I've trimmed this and um, now you can't really see the wood through that very well. The shape of it is correct. I'm going to just tie this in. I'm just going to look through there, make sure I can see, and make sure that that camera is in a good place. And I think that would do. I'm just going to tie this in, and then I'm going to cut another one to show you the technique. That's what I do. I, take, I cut bits from freezer bags. You can get proper grafting tape and no doubt it's a good idea to do so if you can. So I start at the top. This is all sort of you know tying up your shoelaces sort of skill. Obviously while I'm doing this it'll move around slightly to so just correct it. Okay I've just locked that there now. It's going to work my way down. Obviously not dislodging the thing. If I dislodge it then get it back into shape. It's got to be held down firmly. You, you must achieve good cambium to cambium contact. The, current, the cambium being the living uh, layer at which the growth takes place. The cambium is, is stuck to bark and then it's not going to do anything. So this has got to be reasonably tight and of course you uh, need to be careful to uh, remove it later in the year but that's a story for another day. Now I'm satisfied that that's locked down well so I'm just going to basically put a half hitch here. I'll do this slowly so you can see what I'm doing. Alright, that doesn't look particularly difficult does it? Make a loop. Forgive me for doing things slowly but I do find and please don't take me wrong when I say this I do get asked a lot of obvious questions which I thought I'd answered. Um, so I'm just doing this in um, you know, slow motion. You can see there's a couple of half hitches, maybe three half hitches will do. That's reasonably strong and that's what I want. I will now uh, do another uh, one. Do it, uh, I'll do it here. Bear in mind, obviously, it's kind of okay that day. I'm just going to cut that, get it out of the way. Yeah. That's, that's made its point. So I'm going to uh, get a bit of uh, cyan wood. A little pencil. And this is a point to note. You want to cut it behind a bud, just at that sort of angle. If you cut it in the middle, like this, then the bit of wood above the bud will die. And it'll, that won't do any good. It'll be repository for disease. So what you want to do is make your cut on your little cyan pencil, a sloping cut just behind a bud. So right now let's see, we'll, uh, we'll go here, I'll show you this as carefully as I can. The knife I use here is an Opinil, it's a French made knife, very widely available. Um, you can order these through the mail. I use a number six, they make a number of different sizes um, I have found the number six is perfect for this work. It doesn't matter whether you have a stainless steel one or not. Stainless steel or regular high carbon steel, it doesn't matter. I'll show you what I've done now. This is a wedge type shape. It may not be perfect. 
if it isn't so much the better because it will give me the opportunity to show you how it's sort of made. Perfect. So we have this piece here. Here is the uh, cyan wood. Now watch what I'm doing here. Take care, avoid cutting yourself. Lock the thumbs together. This is where I'm levering down now. Turn that round, match it up, levering it down. Obviously when you've been doing this a, a little while, you get a bit better at it. I'm out of practice. Uh, snick that out there. I'm out of practice, I haven't done this since last year. Um, now let's just see if that works. Good chance it won't. <laughs> it's, it's not bad, it's not bad. Interestingly, you'll note here that um, there's a little bit of difference in diameter between these two, which is not ideal. You really do want the same diameter. So it isn't a perfect fit, but it's not bad. Uh, it wants to be improved a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to uh, just make this a bit thinner. Now this, the receiving wood here is a bit thicker than the wood that's going on to it, and that isn't ideal. Uh, but don't worry. That's a better fit. It's not a perfect fit. Yeah, it's not. A, I'm not a perfect fit, but it's, it's pretty reasonable. I'll just uh, again show you that. Obviously, this is what I'm doing. I've used. I'm doing this indoors. You see that actually, uh, when that's tied down, that's going to be quite a good fit. Well, I'm happy. I may as well just tie that one in. Um, important thing: tying it in. You've got to get good contact between the living, growing surfaces of the wood so that they can grow into each other. Obviously you need to have a very sharp blade on your knife but I also like to sterilise mine as well. I carry a little um, bottle uh, of um, methylated spirits with me with a little rag attached to it by a string and um, I, I wipe the knife blade every now and then and I've just um, also made a little leather holster so I can put this knife into the leather holster on my belt without undoing the blade but previously I used to put it down on the grass and that wasn't so good uh, I keep it cleaner. Okay three half inches and um, there we have it, the saddle graft. I think there's a lot to be said to putting a little touch of um, sealant on the top of this, whether a bit of grafting wax or tar, if you can get it, or some other sealant. So that is your saddle graft. There are other grafts which you can do, and I'll, um, um, I'll show them in another video. Uh, but that's a saddle graft, which when you've got wood of roughly similar diameters, I find this is a very nice one. But the absolute key thing, um, you want a sharp knife with a small thin blade to do this. See what a thin blade that is. It's no good trying to do this with a thick blade. Uh, it doesn't matter, a hundred pound knife with a thick blade will not do as well as this, which costs, you pay, expect to pay about five or six pounds for one of these, you know, about eight or nine dollars. Um, lovely little knife. Uh, if, if, if what you need to do is get a load of bits of wood and just practice, 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 practice until you get really neat joins and then uh, you should have success.